So here we have the new Olight Seeker 2 Pro. It's a new 3200 lumen light. So basically it'll do 3200 lumens for 2 minutes and then step it down gradually to about 600 lumens for another 150 minutes. Or you can get 1200 lumens for 110 minutes. Let's get it into focus there. So, you know, the usual deal is waterproof to 2 meters. You can drop that 1.5 meters. And this is actually the size in reality. So let's open it up. This is the second one I've been playing with for a couple of days. It's really hard to actually see while filming, it turns out. So kudos to those who've been doing this for a while. So you get the general warning that it has an isolator on it. Let's get to the fun part. So it comes with one of the cool little holsters. Push down, open. Same one that comes with the M2R, but probably slightly bigger, obviously. Or thicker, I guess. So that it actually matches its size. So we take out the isolator. So these run the, is it 21700? Pretty sure it's a 21700. And it's firmly wedged in there. It's odd. So there's another isolator. Uh, this appears to have worn off. Uh, that explains it. So that should go in and out fairly smoothly. There you go. Alright, so yep, it's an Olight 21700 rechargeable, so 5000 milliamp hours. It's always odd that it's dark inside a flashlight, a producer of light. So let's take a quick look. They've borrowed some features from the X9R on this one. So over here it tells you the mode, and that tells you how much battery remaining. So this comes at around, what, 50% charge? Probably 40, most lithium ions seem to come at 40. So as you adjust modes, the light matches. So apparently it can't currently do turbo because the battery's so low. But if fully charged, and I'll show you the other one in a sec. So on this one, fully charged. And it lights up fully. So a crenellated bezel, triple emitter. Haven't actually checked what the emitters are yet. Does it say? No. That's right, I'll check later. Anyway, uh, this is a really cool feature. So it also has the regular lockout. But when... Oh, sorry. It's hard to see when you're not looking. There you go. When it's locked out, you get that little red thing rather than the usual thing that happens on the lights where the LED just, you know, dims and turns on and off very briefly. So, user interface, what does it run? Let's try it out, let's just start from scratch. Cool, so that'll be low, 50 lumens. Hold it again, 300 lumens, high, and then obviously there's no turbo now, but that would be turbo. From off, you can hold it, and you get moonlight. Now, in this instance, moonlight's five lumens, so there's plenty of people who prefer um, sub one lumen for true moonlight but the idea here is just it's a really low mode that gives you 12 days of juice all right so you got some extra grip so this reminds me of 
The same kind of grip that they use on Kershaw knives, actually. Um, I've used it for a couple of days. It is really grippy and works quite well. As you can see, this also tail stands perfectly. So they're using the new kind of bezel that they put on the um, M1T. And I'm pretty sure the M2R runs this as well, actually. Magnetic butt. Is it stable? Yep, yeah, it'll hold this way, but I suspect if you turn it, yeah. So, like the M2R before it, it doesn't really mount itself uh, horizontally, but it works quite well in this configuration. And there's a reason for that. Let's just open up a couple of the accessories. So I played with one for a couple of days, and I'll tell you the story in a minute. But basically, let's see. You get a charging cable, fairly standard. Um, interestingly, Olice decided to, although this charges at the, um, one amp rate of their new one, so the new one that they released has a little tiny LED here, and it looks prettier, the one that came with the S2R, I believe, but on this model, they've gone back to this one. I kind of prefer it, because I found with my, um, S, sorry, S1R2, what happens is... When it's charging, there's only a tiny dot that tells me, and if it's like sitting down vertically, you can't tell. Whereas with these series, this will go red or green based on if it's charging or charged. Um, like this. Oh yeah, so uh, I'll explain that in just a second. We'll open this first. So this is where they're going with this light. Uh, very briefly. It's uh, it's a replacement for the Seeker Type series. Uh, for me, I see it as somewhere between an SR, uh, the, was it the Mini Intimidator and the R50. So it's a nice in-between point. But with the um, the R50, I think it was, you can get a dock and all that kind of stuff. With this one, it doesn't come with the same kind of dock setup, but it's very similar to a Dyson vacuum actually. In that, let me just open this quickly. So you can either affix this to the wall with 3M or you can screw it in. But basically, this goes into the wall. Your magnetic charger fits straight on top. And uh, that's what these are for. I'm guessing these will hold the cable in place where you want it to be. But basically, that goes into your wall. And whenever you need it, just chuck this on for charging. So you can wall mount it, and you can wall mount it in an apartment as well, because it's got uh, the 3M tape, so you don't have to put a hole in if you don't want to. But again, you know, this won't work sideways, but it works perfectly when you just want to pop it on. Uh, I quite like this idea. It won't really work for vehicles as much, but around the house, this is much more useful for me. I'm going to set it up shortly. And I really like that it doesn't... So with, um, I don't know if you've ever used a Dyson vacuum, but what they do is they provide a physical connection point and you just use the actual adapter that came with it so that when you slot your vacuum in, it runs it. And if it dies, you can just replace the adapter. So the part that might die on this eventually would be, I guess, this, based on how, you know, uh, cables go. And that's a really easy replacement. You don't have to unscrew or take anything off. You just bang that back on. And if you want to, and you're, you know, going somewhere, sorry, my throat's a little bit croaky today, but you can basically just ditch it and just take this with you, which is what I did on my trip to Melbourne. Um, so I'll try and put up some photos of lighting up, uh, was it Flagstaff Park from the ninth story and then the 17th story. So plugs on, all good. Uh, so, an interesting side point that you might want to um, double check things on. But basically, this doesn't come with a pocket clip. The idea for this light is that it can live inside of a house. It will sit there safely um, until you need to use it. And at the same time, you can still comfortably put it into a pocket uh, if, if there's nothing in the pocket especially. Um, otherwise, put it in a holster or put it onto lockout mode so you can put it in a bag or wherever you want. So you can EDC it. 
that its primary goal is as a general house light, I think, for me anyway. Still, I'm going to carry it because so many lumens. Some quick notes on the user interface. So very, very similar to the um, S1 series. Hold from off for your moonlight. Once it's on, you just hold it down and it cycles through modes. So it memorizes moonlight, low, medium, and high. If you put it on turbo and then turn it off, it'll memorize that turbo is high. So, um, other than a feature that they kept that I think they removed from their lights for a little while, makes sense for a house holding light, but once it's on, double click and hold. See that it just blinked? You can double click and hold again. Two blinks. So that sets up the timers and they go for a nine minute or a three minute timer. So you can basically just put it on, on whatever mode you wanted it, set the timer, go to bed, it'll turn itself off. So that works really well for camping, for example. Um, that cool feature that they kept is no matter what you're doing, double click straight to turbo. Um, in this case, again, obviously, it's not at full battery, so it's not turbo, but it goes to the next highest mode available. You can also triple click for strobe. Ooh. And that's, so let's move back to low. So that's while on as well. Double click straight to high. Triple click straight to strobe. So from on or off, those will always do that feature. And... The only one of those direct features you lose while on is the moonlight because obviously now it's cycling through modes. So, quick reference point. First up, this is the Olight M2R neutral white on turbo. Nine stories up. Now this is the uh, Seeker 2 Pro. At the risk of annoying my neighbors, it's roughly, it's actually 12 a.m. So I'm just gonna quickly do a show of the X7 in comparison to it. So it's the highest the X7 gets. the Seeker 2 Pro. Pretty cool. So it's kind of loud, but this is um, no lights. Now it's moonlight. Low. Medium. Hi and turbo. So here you can see a wall that's about 40 meters away and it's pretty dark. And so now we just light it up and you can see on turbo that it lights up everything in that area safely so you can see it from a safe distance. So my final thoughts on the Olight Seeker 2 Pro, uh, it's a pretty damn good light. Uh, since the X7 came out, I've had trouble thinking of lights as bright because it was so damn bright. This is one of the first times I think a uh, portable little light has provided what I would define as enough light, even if it's in turbo mode. It would work great for around the house. Um, if you're in a career where you can actually mount this in the holster especially, it would be perfect. The only reason I'd consider a different light to this is if you want the M2R. Otherwise it provides a ton of wider area lighting, I guess you could call it. And it does so with a bunch of really good features. So the dock especially, uh, the one that lets it just click up, makes it really good for just chucking to charge at the end of the day or leaving it in a set part of your house. Where you know it'll be and you know it'll be charged so i think they've really hit it out of the park um, if there were any changes to be made that i'd really like it would be neutral white because why not 
and if there was any way to include a pocket clip but I don't think the pocket clip is a deal breaker um, oh, as usual it would be great if the magnet would let it sit to the side but based on the size and um, weight of most of the 18650 and up size lights I don't think that's going to be very feasible but um, yeah good job I like